The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. And today we're going to talk about intentional infliction of emotional distress. This is a tort claim in Illinois, which means it's something that uh, people can sue one another for in civil court. Uh, the claim is based around one party, the defendant, uh, basically causing, intentionally causing the plaintiff to suffer emotional distress. Um, it's usually tacked on with other claims, uh, with other types of behavior, because damages can sometimes be hard to prove for this. Um, so let's talk first about what the elements of an emotional distress claim are, and these are the things that the plaintiff has to prove in order to win their case. The first element is that the defendant committed extreme and outrageous conduct. We'll talk in about more detail uh, about what extreme and outrageous conduct is in a moment. The second element is that the defendant intended to cause severe emotional distress or knew that there was a high probability that his or her conduct would cause severe emotional distress. And the final and third element is that the conduct did in fact cause severe emotional distress. So those are the three things that the plaintiff has to prove in, in order to be successful. Extreme and outrageous conduct, intent, and severe emotional distress as a result of the conduct. So let's first dig into what extreme and outrageous conduct is, what qualifies as extreme and outrageous conduct. The rule of thumb is it's that it's conduct that goes beyond the bounds of decency. It has to be more than mere insults, indignities, or threats. That's a quote from, from case law. Uh, courts will take a look at this on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, intentional emotional uh, infliction of emotional distress claims are very case-specific, so they'll look at the facts of each particular case to determine, based on previous cases and case law, uh, whether the conduct in question goes beyond the bounds of decency. Courts will consider frequency and duration of the conduct, whether there's a pattern of conduct that exists. Uh, courts will actually take a particularly close look at whether the defendant has abused a special role or position in the life of the plaintiff, such as uh, employer, attorney, police officer, or landlord. So if they're in a special position with respect to the plaintiff, not just a random person, a uh, position of power usually, then they are more likely to be held accountable for infliction of emotional distress. Finally, if the defendant has knowledge of a mental or physical condition that would make the, the plaintiff more susceptible to emotional distress, uh, that knowledge will be taken into consideration. The condition itself doesn't automatically uh, make it easier to, to prove an emotional dis distress claim unless the defendant had knowledge of that condition. Um, so let's talk about how severe the distress has to be to uh, rise to the level of, uh, of an intentional infliction of emotional distress claim. The, the question, the standard, is whether an ordinary person would have been expected to endure the distress. Physical injury isn't required, and courts will weigh both the intensity and duration of the distress that the plaintiff suffered. And finally, let's talk about damages. Damages are the reason that these claims are usually tacked on with other as a as a count in other lawsuits involving other claims because it's hard to prove and recover damages for intentional emo emotional distress claims. Um, punitive damages, which are just damages to punish the defendant, and attorney fee damages are not permitted in intentional. Uh, infliction of emotional distress claims. So that means that the only damages that you can get are compensatory damages, damages to compensate you for your actual injury suffered. Now again, the injury doesn't have to be physical injury, it can be pain and suffering, but pain and suffering damages can be hard to prove unless you uh, you have a therapist that you've been going to and, and can have an expert witness testify as to your pain and suffering. So intentional infliction of emotional distress claims are one of the easiest claims to meet the elements for because there's a very gray area as to what constitutes infliction of emotional distress. They're one of the hardest claims to uh, basically get damages for because you actually, actually have to prove that whatever distress was caused to you was so severe that it caused an injury that de that deserves monetary compensation. So thanks so much for listening. Please leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions and please subscribe to our YouTube station. Thanks. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. 
Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizeyourbusiness.com, and visit makingrealestatefun.com for real estate videos and podcasts. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation. Thanks for watching.